So glad he's done with. He was the worst of them. However, he was also the only one so far who walked. Now if I encounter anyone, I don't I don't think I could escape. He was hard enough for walking. Is this just me going to my death right now? Like It says find the key. The objective didn't even update yet. I already found the key. I'm supposedly here. <laughs> Mail ward. That's behind door number this one. Whoa. Stop doing that. It scares me. Is that when Father Martin did that? Or are we still... I don't know. Because, you know, he did send out the email, but then, since then, like, 14 hours at least have passed, right? Because two hours when we awoke with him in the chair, and then 12 hours um, when the last villain, the father-to-be, you know. Anyway, a chapel on fire in the distance. I didn't even know we had a church. Where's God when you need him? Could be when Martin did that stuff. I don't know. Who's... Let's just say he's dead. Yeah. What kind of sick hey. fuck would do this to somebody? Hey guys. He even took his damn pants. Tell you one thing. I've seen more than enough dick and balls tonight to last me a lifetime. And not all of them attached to a man. Let's wrap this up and get back to the truck. Read the note. I mean, are they bad? I was wondering, but... Corporate cops, mercenaries, private military contractors, whatever they call them now. They're as helpless as the rest of us. Need to get out. Escape. Amen. So should I not let them see me? Or maybe they just won't notice anyway. Something to vault over. That's good. Kill anything that moves. It's not reassuring. I move. I move frequently. I don't move quickly right now, but I move. Hey, look, another note. Cool. From Helen Granat, uh, Group 8416 at Murkoff Corp. Subject, Rudolf Wernicke phase out. Dear sirs, the groundwork has been laid to ensure an uneventful egress, I guess, for Rudolf Wernicke from structural and financial systems at Mount Massive. His advanced age should alleviate any suspicions among contractors and employees, among whom he has been cheerfully nicknamed the Crypt Keeper, and legally speaking, he died years ago. I understand patients 143068, 142791, and 148681 have already been scheduled for transit. We're all terribly excited at the obvious profit potential of the new project. My researchers have combed through Wernicke's files and found no mention of the three lucid dreamers. I think we can safely assume Wernicke was sufficiently distracted by the partial success of patient Billy Hope, along with his own infirmity, to be ignorant of the real discovery at hand. Even minimal exploitation of these resources is hard to overestimate. I only hope the new facility is sufficiently shielded to allow female staff, so I can see what comes with my own eyes. Respectfully, Hel Helen Grenat. The new facility? Outlast 2, everybody. I mean, I that is coming out soon, I know. Like, maybe I don't want to open this door if they're told to shoot on sight. But I'm curious. I can't even try. Alright. Wait, they're not considered the enemy right now, right? Where I have to hide from them? I understand, guys. I do. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Still on fire. Huh. 
Look at us trying to escape. Trying so hard. With the music and the lighting actually becoming more promising, but knowing that this game just can't end well, right? We can't have a happy ending in Outlast, can we? Can we? I would not mind it. I would be happy with a happy ending. I don't need everything to be twisted. The game itself was twisted enough. No note about how you can hear the static like that? That's kind of disappointing. That's why I went so close to it. But not that way. Oh, just the door on the other side? They just wanted us to hear the static first, yeah. I assume, because the whole wall rider thing. This dude has also seen more than enough horror, I would imagine. Alright, let's read this. Transfer authorization for patients 143068, 142791, and 1486681. From Murkoff Psychiatric Systems Mount Massive to Murkoff Ard Zykner Facility. Uh. Caution! Level triple black security protocols, including chemical restraint, physical restraint, and separate adaptive hyperbaric chambers are to be used at all time in transit. Chemical stimulation is highly recommended for all personnel within 500 meters of the patients. Attempts at communication should be assumed to be hallucinations and disregarded. Facial disfigurement should not be taken as a sign of lost, of lost acuity. Okay, they are physically blind, but not unseeing. Note, security clearances for Project Wall Rider will not apply to information regarding patients 143068, 142791, and 148681. New security clearances will be issued and appropriate protocol assigned. Let's just keep heading down, follow the blood. Yep. I am, for the most part, following that blood. Let's just use the bathroom real quick. Before we leave, you know? We gotta do this right. That was refreshing. Thank you for coming along with me. Well, if I'm following the blood, the blood's mostly there. But with the prospect of getting another document... No, I don't need another... I mean, these doors are both locked. I don't need another document. It's because there's nothing there. I would totally take another document. Wait, this is, like, by the front, isn't it? If I'm still following the blood, definitely. Well, that's mean. I can't go in there. I don't actually have to go down, do I? Can I then make a left here somewhere? No. I might have to go down the stairs then. Because this is locked. Let's see if it's downstairs. I mean, if it's not, we'll know pretty soon. It'll just stop us, right? Where are you? Let's make a deal. You help me. I'll help you. God. I am blind. I'm stuck like a pig. I know who this is, so where is he? Like, that's the big dude. That was the dude in charge, right? Who smashed the radio, right? But I am seriously not seeing him. I feel so stupid right now. Oh, is that him? Might be. Jeremy Blair, let's see. Jeremy Blair, my supervisor, supervisor. A man who'd see me skinned, salted, and raped for a promotion and few martinis. Injured, dying if he's not already dead. I'm trying to feel sorry for him, really I am. But there's no way in heck he's stopping me from getting out of this godforsaken place. I'm coming home, Lisa. Oh yeah, he's just at the door. Uh, help me up. Oh, 
Really? You're gonna be that kind of dude? No one can know! No one! It's very bloody. I want to live! Please don't shoot me. Let me get out. Let me escape. Is that my vehicle? No, that's... That's Miles, right? Or the jur journalist we called? The one in the main game? The door's glowing. Can we actually get out? Can we actually do it? Was it helping us? Because we weren't able to change gears, you were we? That button. It's not going back, Mr. Park. There's enough hard evidence in that video file to make a world of shit for our friends at Murkoff. You got out of Mount Massive alive, and we've done everything in our power to cover your tracks. But our enemies are twitching and malicious corporate paranoiacs with resources you're too moral to imagine. You won't be the only target. Anyone you care about, your wife, your child, there'll be nothing to Murkoff but ways to hurt you. I need you to understand the bridge you're crossing here. You will do irrevocable damage to the company. You might even get close to something like justice. But once you click upload, your life is over. Everyone you love is fucked. But it's the right thing to do. Is hurting Murkoff worth that much to you? Do I actually have a choice here? The choice was just to left click. Holy buckets, guys. All right. So that was Whistleblower, the Outlast DLC. And while I think that the original Outlast game took me about five or six hours to complete, this recording has been going on for two hours and 55 minutes. And so this is actually like, a, this is a big expansion for your DLC, you know. Oftentimes, nowadays, DLC are just such minor things, you know. But this one, it, it was, it was another Outlast game is essentially what it was. Like, people have told me that and I didn't quite, like, I was like, oh yeah, no, I could see that. But now I actually can. It's like, yes, I played it. It felt like another Outlast game. You know, with new maps, new, you know, you were a new character, even if it was essentially the same with the camera and everything. New enemies, good gosh! Like, people told me that there was someone more disturbing in here than Traeger, or Traeger. Again, I forget how to pronounce his name. I'm gonna go back and forth. I was about to say I'll say Traeger, but I know I'm gonna end up saying Traeger again. People are saying that, and I'm- and so I assumed they meant the cannibal dude, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's disturbing, but it's not like, you know, we've seen stuff like that before. We've seen- you know, the patients eating other patients and everything. And so him chasing us for that, you know, like it was scary, yeah, and it was disturbing, but not like any more so than the others have been. And then, you know, Chris Walker, he was, he was all, he's always scary. Um, and the Penis Brothers are always scary. But yes, by far the worst one, the worst part, the holy, holy, I don't even know. During that part, I c 
couldn't even speak. Like, okay, I could have if I wanted to, but I had nothing to say. I was... The tension! Just seeing what he did to those patients, and then when you're actually strapped down. Oh my gosh! So it was like... Wow, you know, that was so disturbing. That was so terribly disturbing. <laughs> I don't know. You know, like... He was the worst villain. In the sense that he was just so... Corrupt and oh my gosh And I liked I imagine that's the same for male viewers and female viewers I don't think it's just because you know, he was trying to create a female out of a male by Cutting them open, you know, I I think it's, it's Disturbing all around equally so like I don't you know and oh oh uh, hmm. Okay, so This story was nice I mean, you know, like, it was terribly disturbing, and it's hard to call something like that nice, but, you know, it was, for an Outlast game, it was nice. I know I've only played two with this, you know, Whistleblower counted as one, and then the original Outlast game counted as the other, obviously enough. Um, but I can say that I'm really glad that he did actually get out in the end, and I was surprised, too, because it seemed like Wall Rider actually did help him. I was like, no, you got us to the car, you got my hopes up, and then you're gonna have him. But no, it seemed like, you know, he was freaking out, yeah, and he started to try to shift, but it was, you know, like, stuck. But then Wall Rider turned us around and seemed to push us out the gate, like it wanted us to learn about what was going on, you know? It's hard to say, and we are now back on the main Outlast menu, so yay! It's it's hard to say, but it seemed to me like Wall Rider actually was helping us. And then to know at the end that he did survive, I don't know who the buckets that was talking to him at the end, but, you know. If, if it actually did give us a choice at the end between upload it and not, I would have uploaded it, because yeah, it sucks for him and his family, like, you know, they're absolutely right. But we've seen firsthand what the Murkoff Corporation is capable of, what lengths they're willing to go to, you know, all just for the sake of money, greed, and maybe some scientific achievement. And it's not... It's messed up beyond belief, you know? Like, yeah, it sucks that your life is ruined and in extension, you know, the lives of your family members, but that is just not something that you could let go on. Imagine how many families that tore apart, how many people that, you know, killed, mutilated, scarred for life in any manner of ways. That's just not... Oh, oh. Okay, so yeah. I am I am happy with how this one ended because, yeah, we did get out. I was happy with how, you know, the original Outlast ended too because he at least said in the notes that he was, like, free regardless of what happened. Because at least I could take some peace in that. You know, I would have liked it better had he lived, you know, in the original Outlast too. But... I was, I was happy enough with it because we did get that comfort of like, it's all right, you know, whatever, I, you know, whatever happens from this point on, I'm free, I'm done here, you know, that kind of thing. And that was nice. But this one actually knowing that he was alive and knowing that he made a difference because, you know, with the first character, we don't know for sure exactly, you know? I mean, he kills Billy Hope and then it seems like that's what lets the wall rider out. And if the wall rider did help this dude, whose name I already forget, uh, what was it? I don't even remember. For which I apologize. That's my fault. Especially considering, like, you know, Jeremy Blair or whatever his name. I think that was his name. At the end, said our name, and I remember Jeremy's, but not our own. My bad. Um, but it was, it was, he, you know, we actually got to see him upload the file, but the last one we didn't. He just died with the camera, so. I think I was talking actually about how a wall rider got out and then seemed like he was doing good stuff. Maybe. Hopefully he's fighting for us for good. Um, but one of the one of the most important things I think we learned from this and this came especially from actually reading all the documents as we found them was that we learned of a new facility for the Murkoff Corporation which I assume might be where Outlast 2 takes place I don't know I don't know but um, another cool thing about this was seeing how some of the events related to the original Outlast which really I can only say that in regard to like seeing the chapel burning because then I could say like oh I think that's when you know Martin you know burned himself um and it was nice to see when all the soldiers actually came out and because you know in the original we only see the soldiers right before they shoot us and so in this one we actually do get to see him like walking around as we're still trying to find our own escape and yeah by the way did I mention how disturbing that to be husband was holy balls like oh 
oh, when will I forget that, you know? I hope that doesn't haunt my dreams. So, I don't know what else there really is to say. I mean, I'm sure that I could keep talking about this stuff. And it's, again, not to say that the cannibal, like, wasn't scary or, you know, disturbing himself. I didn't like him trying to eat us. I didn't like him stuffing us into a furnace or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, husband-to-be takes the cake for that. That was way... That was awful. That was so bad. Just seeing, like, that first... When you go down into the basement, that first, like, representation where they were posed, like, the birth scene, that was terrible. Um, now I understand what the one guy was afraid of. He wasn't afraid of, like, the multiple personality dude, the dissociative guy, who, you know, was, like, kid, the grandpa, the father, and just whatever, fourth person, just brother? I don't know. No, that's not what the guy was afraid of. He was afraid of the husband-to-be because, oh my gosh. But, yeah. Yeah, no, this game was, this was disturbing. Outlast is always gonna be disturbing, I'm sure. But this was, I don't know how they could make it worse. I don't want them, you know, Red Barrels, whoever's gonna make Outlast 2, I don't want them to try to make it more disturbing than that. That, I don't need to see that kind of stuff. I'm sure some people like it because, you know, like, they'll actually willingly go out and watch horror movies. I'm not that type, you know? The closest I get to horror is occasionally I play a scary game like this one. And I wouldn't even do that if it were just me. I mean, if I'm to be perfectly honest, the reason that I play this is to share it with you, to ho hopefully entertain you guys, you know? And granted, yeah, I get to watch the recordings afterward and entertain myself, um, because even then I forget, you know, like, what my reactions are and what scares me and everything. But it's 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 for you guys, you know? So this was, this was way too much for me, you know? Obviously, I made it through, and it, I don't think I'm gonna have, like, haunting nightmares or anything. But that was more than enough. I'm, I'm good on the horror for a while, I think. Um, before I ramble any further, I think it's about time that I call it here. Oh, I will say that I'm not going to say which one I liked better, you know? Um, just that they were both... Like, I was definitely impressed by Whistleblower, especially considering it was a DLC. Like, if you're into Outlast, Whistleblower is a must-buy. Like, it is definitely worth buying as a DLC. It's not, it's not, it's not cheating you. It's not. It is a full new game with brand new content and everything, so, yeah. But yes, as I said, without rambling anymore, we're gonna call it here, so let me know what you guys thought about this in the comments. I'm sure you've been telling me, of course, all along the way, but, like, your overall thoughts on the game, if you would like. Um, and to answer some people's question, will I play Outlast 2 at some point in the future? Quite possibly at some point in the future. Not right when it comes out, I wouldn't imagine. And oh, I was gonna like give another not, no, 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 but I can't think of anything other than not right when it comes out. Um, possibly, but it's it's on me, you know. I just have to be feeling it, and I might put it up as a vote on my Facebook page, you know, for when I need a new series game, but for now, I think that I'm done. I need a break, you know what I mean? I need something happy again. So, yes, with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!